Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and Android O has finally been released for developers. This is a preview, and with Android, when you actually have a preview and not a beta, that means you actually have to flash the ROM onto the device yourself. You have to unlock the bootloader and then install it using a command prompt or a terminal, and if you're not sure how to do that, this isn't for you, but I thought I'd share with you what's actually new in this update. So the first thing, let's take a look at the version. We'll go into settings, we'll go down to system, we'll go to about, and you'll see, if we scroll down here, you'll see the build at the bottom, and if we tap on Android O, we get the little O for your preview version. Now, if you have NuGet, this will show up. This is the O for O, whatever O stands for. It could be Oreo or something else. One of the things they've updated is the notifications. Now, I actually don't have any notifications, so maybe I'll get one as we're doing this video, but they've changed some of this up here as well. So you'll see LTE is in large font, and as we move this up and down, it's a little bit different. Some of the things stay in the upper right now where they didn't stay before, and it, it looks pretty nice. They've updated it a little bit. Settings has changed as well, so if we go into settings, it looks a little bit different. There's some things here with with some of the icons, everything's black and a gray color, and it's moved around a little bit, and the way they do things is a little bit different, but it's really nice. Battery is also updated a little bit, and speaking of battery, this update actually fixes some of the battery, or tries to improve upon it as far as what it already is. So what it's doing is it's a little bit more aggressive when it comes to other applications and what they're doing in the background. So for implicit broadcasts and background services and location updates, it actually really kind of locks that down for the app developer and makes sure that you're getting the best battery life out of your phone that you can. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll actually see the usage. So this has been on 53 minutes for the screen usage, overall consumption, in mobile network scanning. So it's pretty good and it's really comprehensive, a little bit more than what it was before unless you use a different utility. The buttons are actually different on the bottom. If we tap on this and slide up, you'll see they change and the icons change as well to kind of go with the theme here. So if we slide up like that, and these buttons are all customizable now using the UI tweaker that's built in. So you can mess around with those, move them closer together, tweak whatever ones you want, and it's got some nice customizations. They've also changed one of the apps in here. We now have a files app. Let's go back here. We have a files app and the files app is just a storage place for your downloads. So it's just a replacement for that, but it's named files. So that's nice as well. Now the lock screen is a little bit different now. We can double tap to turn on the screen and you'll see we have kind of a little ambient display and there's a little icon showing me that I have something from inbox. If I tap on this again, tap right here, it says tap again to open. So if we tap and tap again, it opens up and you'll see what we have here. If we tap and hold on it, we can get more settings or we can go to done. And if we open settings and we put in our password or fingerprint, it brings you right to settings and gives you categories now. And the categories are a little bit different. And what they allow you to do is allow different applications to use different notifications differently. So this one says, let the app decide. But if we scroll down here, uh, you'll see importance. And under importance, we have some new options, such as no sound or visual interruption, show silently, make sound, let the app decide. So we have all of these different options as well now. And so what you can do with this is you can actually block, say, notifications from technology, uh, maybe snooze other features or news from within the app can actually bring you notifications. It's fully customizable if you want to go that deep into it. So it's really nice that way. Those notifications are also adjustable here as well. So you can do that right from here or from elsewhere. We can also slide if we want to mute or snooze, we can do that. If we tap on snooze, it snooze for 15 minutes, or we can snooze it for different amounts of time as well. So we have all these new options that are built in that are really handy and, and just something that makes the experience a little bit better. Now back to the lock screen, on the bottom we've got our camera, we can slide up here. We've also got a microphone here we can slide up, and that's again completely customizable. You can change that to Chrome or whatever you'd like from within the system settings as well. So if we want to open up search we can do that. Again we have to unlock the device to do that. 
and it goes right to search or to your Google Assistant. One of the other features they've added, which I can't really get to work yet, is picture in picture. I've messed around with that. Let's search for it. Picture in picture, you'll see here, we have picture in picture and it works for Google Play services and YouTube. I haven't been able to get this to work. I've played my videos in YouTube, tried to get it to run alongside other apps, and that's probably something that's going to change over time. And again, this is an early preview and that's probably why it's not working. But basically we can preview in a little window what we want to watch. Maybe we're watching something on YouTube and then maybe we're in taking notes in Keep or something like that. You'll have that option in the future. Now, some of the things they've tweaked in the background, you're just not going to see, but one of the things they've done that will eventually kind of pan out and help a lot of people is if you're using an application such as 1Password. 1Password is a great password manager, but what you can do in the future anyway is have it autofill your info. So developers can opt to make it basically the default application to fill in your info. So instead of having Google Chrome fill in whatever it's filling in, you can have a different app do the same thing. So you want to store everything in one password or something else like that. You can do that last pass, any of those things, and they'll auto fill all of your information. So that's a really nice update as well. When it comes to developers, they've added quite a few things in the background to make it a little bit easier. So developers can now use the font of their choice and it's more easily done through an XML layout. So that's nice. Apps can also use different color profiles to use wide color gamut displays, for example. So in future displays, like the iPhone 7 Plus has a wide color gamut display, but now the app developer can actually tweak the color profile on the newer displays. So whatever new displays come out with wide color gamut, they can take full advantage of that if they'd like to. You also have native support for hi-fi Bluetooth audio built in. Also apps can use high performance, low latency audio streaming. So that's all going to be built in and future devices can communicate more easily over Wi-Fi, even without an access point. All of these features are built in. So if you have Wi-Fi aware devices, maybe you have a phone near another phone, they can actually talk to one another if you're trying to transfer data, something like that. It'll just be more easily done without having to use a Wi-Fi hotspot. Now they've also said they're going to tweak things as far as the keyboard are concerned. So if we go into my website here and we go to the keyboard, they're actually going to add some arrows and make things more aware and context aware and make it a little bit better predictability as far as what you're doing and just some tweaks that are overall enhancements to make things better, such as a tab key and things like that. It's not very evident right now what's going on there, but it should have better predictability and things like that. We also have web view enhancements, which has to do with your browser and the way things use the internet. And also they're doing backend Java enhancements with Java 8. So a lot of different things, everything from security to performance, battery life, all of those things will be tweaked within here. Now within settings, there are a lot of other things you can do as far as tweaking and, and changing and customizing, and obviously Android's known for that, but there's just things they've made a little bit nicer and easier. So that's pretty much it as far as Android O is concerned. What it will be named, we're not really sure, and it's a really nice update basically for the back end of how Android works. It makes it better for developers and the experience just keeps improving. So we may see some tweaks here and there. We actually have the whole schedule of when they're going to push the next updates and everything. They actually tell you that from Google. And right now it's a few months out for the next update, but right now, it's looking pretty good. I wouldn't recommend it on someone's device that doesn't have an extra device and you wants to use this every day. It's probably going to be something you want to revert back to the last version on. But let me know what you've found in Android O. If you've installed it, if you have a Pixel or a Nexus device, let us know what you think about it in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.